coordinates or rectangular coordinates to label points. And we've just talked about polar coordinates as a way to label points. So there must, you know, it's two different ways of labeling the same points. So if we have some point P, maybe P is right here, just happens to be in the first quadrant. If you're labeling that ordered pair in Cartesian coordinates, it's X and Y, and think about what that is. X is a horizontal distance, Y is a vertical distance. Okay, and of course the X measurement and the Y measurement are perpendicular to each other. <clears throat> if we are labeling that point in rectangular po coordinates, it's R and theta, where R is that distance and theta is that angle, possibly. So what we want to take a look at is what are the relationships between R and theta and X and Y. If you have polar coordinates, can you switch them back to rectangular coordinates? If you have Cartesian or rectangular coordinates, can you switch them back to polar coordinates? Well, guys, this is a right triangle. So all of the things about right triangles that have always been true are going to still be true. Um, if you have, well, let's see, the things that jump out to me when I look at this. x squared plus y squared has to equal r squared. The tangent of angle theta would have to be y over x. Um, Thinking about sine and cosine too, the sine of angle theta would be y over r and the cosine of angle theta would be x over r. So actually these first two relationships that came to mind when I was looking at this picture are going to give us ways to take values of x and y and figure out values of r and theta. So if we have rectangular or Cartesian coordinates and we want to switch to polar, we want to convert to polar. Oops, helps if you can spell polar. Then R squared will equal X squared plus Y squared and the tangent of angle theta would equal Y over X. So certainly there's some there's some work you'd have to do and you know figure out make sure you got the right value of theta and make sure you're getting the correct value of r is it going to be a positive r or a negative r but if you need to convert from rectangular to from rectangular to polar those are the relationships you're going to use now second set of stuff right here if we take this equation sine theta is y over r and multiply both sides of that by r, we'd have r times sine of theta equals y. And if we take our cosine equation and do the same thing, r times cosine of theta equals x. Well, those two relationships are going to be what we're going to use if we have r and theta, if we have polar coordinates and we need to change to rectangular. So you need to just know those facts. Okay, switching from polar to rectangular is very, very straightforward. You really don't have to think a whole lot. So, for example, if I've got the ordered pair 2, 7 pi over 4, that's an r and a theta. So I want to know what x is. x would be 2 times the cosine of 7 pi over 4 and y would be 2 times the sine of 7 pi over 4. 
So thinking about the angle 7 pi over 4, cosine would be positive square root of 2 over 2. Sine would be negative square root of 2 over 2. So x is going to be square root of 2, y is going to be negative square root of 2, so the point square root of 2, negative square root of 2 is our point. Now it is a good idea to kind of think about the two points and make sure that it's reasonable that they could be in the same location. Think about the quadrant 7 pi over 4. That angle would put you in the fourth quadrant and then we're counting out two units. So there's our point, roughly. Is it reasonable to have a positive two, square root of 2 and a negative square root of 2 to label the same point? And if you just put that point on the graph there, you're going to see that a positive x and a negative y and the values that are equal is going to be very reasonable. There's a little more work involved, thinking-wise at least, if you're going from Cartesian to polar. So let's start with this one. Now this is an x and a y. It is very important that we get a feel for where this point is. Okay, negative 4, negative 4 squared to 3, somewhere in the second quadrant. All right, so r squared will equal negative 4 squared plus 4 square roots of 3 squared. So we're going to have 16 plus 48. r squared is 64. So r is going to be either positive or negative 8, and we'll decide which one we want in just a second. The tangent of the angle theta would be the y value divided by the x value. Okay, and that's going to simplify to negative square root of 3. And if you do the inverse tangent of this using your calculator, and then convert that back to a fraction in terms of pi, because this is going to be a special angle. The angle you actually get out of the inverse tangent is negative pi over 3. Okay, now think about that. Sine, think about where negative pi over 3 is. Be down here, second quadrant. Sine, let's see, that point would be 1 half negative square root of 3 over 2. All right, sine is negative square root of 3 over 2. Cosine is 1 half. That fraction reduces to negative square root of 3, so that's why that's the correct angle. Now you have some decisions to make, and again, there are lots of different ways you can answer this question. If you choose to use the angle negative pi over 3, then you're talking about this angle whose terminal side is in the fourth quadrant. Our point, though, is in the second quadrant. So that would work as long as you choose a negative value of r. If you prefer to have a positive value for r, you're going to have to use the angle in the second quadrant, or an angle in the second quadrant, and the, the smallest positive one is 2 pi over 3. So both of those are perfectly reasonable answers. Um, and that they are just two of many.